Now we're going to move around and we're going to shave off his back legs and uh, put in his rosettes. And again, the best way to do this if you're shaving a dog is brush it first. Always brush it first. That marbling will go away. I know I'm in your bum. It's okay. So we have to be super careful here because like I said, he doesn't really have any lines. And we're going to start at the bottom of the leg here and we're going to work our way up. Now since you want their back palms to look kind of like they're always moving, um, we're going to come down on an angle like this. So it's not straight across, we're going to come on an angle like this and leave more hair above this hawk. If you actually look at the structure of him, this hawk is right here. So we're leaving at least a finger length of hair at the back of the leg. And again, I don't know what clipper length he could tolerate, so we're going to go with the 15 here. So again, on this angle here, just going to go backwards right up his leg. Good boy. I know. He's a little sensitive about his balls. I guess most of you guys are, hey? A lady he doesn't know shaving them is not impressing James. Okay, so when I come up here, since I'm not concentrating on the rosettes right now, I'm just getting this hair off. I'm not gonna go too far up until we start working on them. It's okay. Be very careful of this flap here. Clippers can absolutely catch it. So again, just getting the bulk off here. And then we'll put that shape in of that rosette. All right. Just do this other side quickly. Again, make sure you don't cut that hawk hair off. And that little tendon right here, in order to get that hair to stick out, I just stick my finger in the other side. So therefore it's easy to shave off. There's no wrinkles in the dog. It's a nice clean line. Good boy. You have one cute butt, James. All right. It's okay. Good boy. It's okay, you're not getting neutered today. All right. So just nice and clean around his butthole. Yes, I know I'm supposed to be more correct and use anus or rectum or something, but about her butthole. You're okay, good boy. All right, so now I've done the easy part on the back end. The legs are shaved. Now I need to concentrate on the tail going into the rosette and the line around here, which is the fine, fine, fine trimming. So I'm gonna just take my comb. Anti-stat spray, because in these convention centers, static is crazy. It's okay, good boy. Somebody's been growing him out for a while. Okay, so I'm gonna line them up. Make sure that your dog's facing forward when you do this. Um, you know, their, their whole lines back here, they have to be so intricate because he's got such a small little back end here that even him turning around like this can screw up my line going, going up from his tail in between the rosettes. So I'm gonna hold his tail coat down and I'm gonna go backwards on his tail. The same length I did on his legs. Good boy. And looking at his skin and how it's handling this blade right now, I'm pretty sure he's used to going a little bit shorter than this, but we'll just leave it this length, just, uh, just in case. And the shorter you go, I think the flashier it looks. 
Um, and then a lot of people like to put their toy poodles, you know, out for a sun pan. They put them out into the yard or the run and their pigment will actually tan, just like we do. And um, the blacker the pigment, I think the better the dog looks. Okay, so I'll just lift them up like this so you can see what we're working with here. So, I mean, there's no real room, rule of thumb. I mean, a finger um, width is probably a good place to go with a toy poodle. If he was a smaller female one, you know, maybe a pinky. But what we want to do is just make this line nice and even. And we're going to square off the rosettes. And then after that, we're going to make them round. Good boy. Okay. Again, the dog facing forward. And we're just going to go in with the tip just to clean this line up a little bit so I can see what I'm working with. And the tip on this side. Oh, you're gonna be so cute, buddy. Okay, so I'm gonna separate that hair and just fine tune this line up a little bit. There's even smaller clippers you can get than this and the blade width is probably half of it. And they come, but they're just a 50 blade. So um, you have to be careful, of course, with the white dogs when you're working with a 50 blade, but you can definitely get into smaller areas a whole lot easier with the smaller version of these clippers. All right, so as you can see, we have a line straight down the middle now. And now we're gonna do the tricky flap flap and up into this side. Are you a good boy? Yes, you are. I'll come around to this side. All right. So my belief is always leave the rosettes too big because when you're working on it, you cannot make hair grow. And tiny little rosettes kind of look like uh, they had surgery on their hips afterwards. So we want to leave them nice and full so that we could fine tune them and then scissor them nice and round. So I'm going to move it right out of the way. This is the top, tough part though, because you really have to watch this flap. So I'm gonna pull that skin nice and tight. I'm just gonna come up and get rid of that hair. Knowing that I have all my rosette hair in my other hand. Just like that. a good boy. And on this side, I want to brush this up a little bit so I don't have that weird wrinkle look. This is, I'm going to be in your way for a second. Okay. So there we have that side. Now the only thing we have left to do is just the jacket. Lots of people have lots of theories about where to move the jacket, where to start it, where to end it. Depending on the length of your dog, I think that's where your decision making comes in. I mean, he is a beautiful, nice, compact little dog. And I think that uh, his jacket's in a pretty good place right now, which means this line here is just right two fingers probably behind his ribs and right at the front of this flap right here. Right at the front of this flap. So we're just gonna very carefully, what are you doing? Would you rather just play? Good, good boy. Oh, you're so cute. Come here. Okay, again, moving the rosette completely out of the way gonna go in just a tiny little line here tiny little line you got a lot of coat buddy go all the way around to the other side okay 
Okay. So now, get rid of all this extra coat and see what we have. See if we have a nice, even, clean line. Let's get a little bit more off here. Good boy. Tie in this line in the middle. Oh, good boy. And all the way around to the other side. Okay. All right. So here we are now with our little shaved bum. Now he looks really uneven because he's got so much coat up here. We won't start scissoring yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my clippers to my advantage to cut down on scissoring and to make these rosettes nice and round. What I mean by that is these clippers don't always have to be used with the blade flat. I'm going to actually sculpt in these rosettes and uh, it's a whole lot easier than trying to get your scissors in there all the way around. So brush them up nice. and out, and I'm actually going to just take them in, I do this on a 40 blade setting, and I'm just going to etch around the whole outside. And this will give you a more definitive line of what you're working with, and like I said, cut down on your scissor time. Oh, it's so cute, getting rounder by the second. So again, just going right in on this angle and etching in. Good boy. on a little bit of an angle this way. You don't really want to do this way because you want it full on top. So I'm just going to the line to the skin. Etching, etching, etching. Good boy, James. Okay. So now you can see you have a much clearer shape of a round rosette. We still haven't even used our scissors. Oh, you're such a good boy. Just gonna do it up top here. All right. Just gonna turn you around, James. You know, and the continental trim obviously isn't for everybody. I don't know anybody actually that just has a pet that wants to keep their dog in this haircut. Sometimes they modify it and scissor off the top knot, but this is a lot of work and a lot of maintenance and they need to be bathed out at least once a week to maintain it. I, I don't know how old James is, but I'm guessing he's probably between a year and a year and a half old. Um, he's got really soft and it probably mats if you look at it funny, never mind if he's rolling around in his bed. So a lot of maintenance. Okay, so we're just gonna etch in this one. Make ourselves a circle. in this way, make our little circle on this side, you know I'm, I'm a groomer that likes the big 10 inch scissors 
And I remember back when we didn't have these fine trimmers and trying to get my 10 inches to make a circle around this rosette. And it was, I mean, I was a beginner groomer to top it all off. And I was using these Mongo shears on these tiny little bums with these tiny little pom-poms. Which is why we probably won't show pictures of what it looked like 20 years ago. All right, so you have a nice round rosette to work on there. So it's the same idea with the bevels on the bottom of the foot. You know, you want to go in on this angle. It's so much less scissoring. Like, it already looks like his rosettes are popping off of his body, which is, you know, kind of the look you want. So again, I'll have to scissor off the top of that, but for now, I'm pretty happy with the shape of them. Except for maybe right here. So that's the simplest way I've found to put in little rosettes.